What's up, everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Credit Repair Shop.com. Can you believe it's night? It's 10 o'clock, and that was a business. One of my uh, customers who owns a, as a matter of fact, he owns a company called Puncture Safe. He sells tires that you can't puncture. You, they won't go flat. You, he on the business cards that we made for him. It, he has a gun on it, gun pointed at the tires. Can shoot the tires, and you can still drive on the tires. Uh, Adam, that's who owns that. We made his business cards and his flyers and different stuff for his company. But uh, the reason why I'm here making this video is uh, everyone. Well, at least the subscribers that, or people that have watched know that my wife uh, has had some lung issues and she needed a transplant. Well, we got the call uh, on Monday morning. We got the call, and this time it wasn't a dry run. Um, it went through, and I had, you know, kind of been quiet about it because you don't want to jinx nothing and. You want to make sure everything goes through because even when they call you in, they can end up saying, well, when we looked at the lungs, they're just not right uh, for you. That's what happened the last time where they see something in there from the, the donated lungs. And um, but this time it was the real deal. And, you know, uh, me and, you know, me and my wife had our conversations uh, and, you know, just talking about stuff while uh, she was getting prepared. And, you know, you can't go in the hospital. We can only talk by phone. I had to drop her off at the door of the hospital and then drive back home. You know, you can't, you can't be there. And they started the surgery at 1 in the morning yesterday uh, or, or early this morning, 1 o'clock in the morning. And they called me every two hours. The nurse called me every two hours to let me know how things were going. And they, like they were telling me that they're about to, you know, open. They called it something else, but basically open her up. She's getting a double lung transplant. So all the way underneath here was opened up. And then they were they called me at one time and said, well, we're starting that. And they called me and said, well, we're taking her, uh, I think they said left lung out, and then they, that took some hours, and then they called me back and said that the right one is out, and then they called me back, and then they said, we're putting the donor right lung in, and then we're putting, the, call me back in the left lung in. I mean, this operation took from, I think it was like 1 a.m. in the morning, all the way to I think I got the final call from the doctor at about 10 or 11 o'clock and you have to give it to these doctors you know with all the stuff that's going on with the virus and people not trusting in what doctors are saying and going through but they're the ones that are in there doing this every day that is their job and uh, you know but you know this doctor he had actually talked to us earlier in the day and he was working and then he said he was going to take a nap and maybe and then he was going to do this all, that whole time and they can't take a break once they open you up and start once they start they can't stop not even a bathroom break nothing and my wife uh had asked him well what if you got to go to the bathroom or something and, and he said that his wife his wife would ask him that same question and he just said that for some reason once he starts working and going through it it's just something he, he doesn't have to go to the bathroom that he just works right through it like it you know just straight all of those can you imagine all of those hours uh, I can I think nurses could probably switch in and out of there the anesthesiologist could probably switch out but the main surgeon has to be there because they probably know what they've done and what needs to be done and what uh, shouldn't be done. Like he was the one 
that was going to do all the surgery and made the final decisions on everything. And uh, but it, when you are not without your spouse, me and my wife are about to be married, uh, about to be 31 years uh, this spring. And when you don't have your spouse with you, that you, especially if you've been around that long, uh, there's a lot of stuff you start to see that people do. It, when she went into the hospital the first time uh, about five years ago, uh, I was already overwhelmed with just stuff. And we have a person that cleans the house. But, you know, we, I just said, my wife agreed, just we don't need to have anybody here you know, we just, if, if we're both here, then we're here. If not, then, you know, we don't need to have other people coming in other than family. And, uh, but you see all the stuff that's done for you that, that, that men probably take it, take for granted. Dishes. I folded some towels today, uh, making dinner, even though sometimes I make dinner, I cook a lot. I like to come home and cook some of the time, but it's different when you cook all the time. And I got to be prepared for the next two weeks to where I'm going to be cooking all the time. Or, you know, I'm not going to be going out to dinner and all that a lot. As a matter of fact, when I get off of this video, I'm going to, uh, I might work out tonight, but I know definitely I'm going to be working out every morning before I go to work and then my regular workouts that I do during the, the evenings I'll be doing that I'm not going to sit around and be eating up stuff um, but she really takes care of a lot of stuff for me I mean it's and then also I'm in this big house we have a pretty good sized house and it's just quiet you know watching stuff on TV and looking at the internet and working on things uh we have our app that's going to be released for my other company called blue book blue book black news um, currently in the app store but don't download that when we have a major upgrade that's coming so i was working on that and working with the programmers and looking at you know what we're doing with that and um just trying to keep myself busy. My daughter keeps calling me, making sure I'm okay. And uh, son-in-law texts me. My mom done called about five, six, seven times. I, my family, my uh, uh, mom and all my brothers and sisters, they all live in Texas and Atlanta. I'm the only one that's up here. And my wife's side of the family, she was uh, adopted and she was the only child. So in her both her parents uh passed away and um so it's uh well her her father her adopted father is still around but uh you know but her mom has passed away so what um i want to get into in this video this is going to be like one of those that's not going to really get into the strategies about credit repair and stuff. What I want to do is I just want to make you aware. I want to make you aware that just things are not really as we all see them for what we think that we have more control over our circumstances. And um, uh, I was watching a little bit. I think it was, it was the Bee Gees. It was uh, the Bee Gees, the old disco group from Saturday Night Fever, and uh, some of you may be too young or maybe heard some of the records and stuff, but they had, um, Barry, Barry Gibb said something, and I think it was, I heard it because I knew I was going to make a video and I wanted to just give you, make you have a more awareness of your of, of yourself of consciousness and he said something in there uh where he said and this is the older brother he's the only one that's still alive out of the three brothers the older brother and he said that for what all the stuff that he went through the memories and everything thing that he went through with his brothers and becoming a group and and the success and 
the failures, everything. Because they went, they went down and then way up and then way down and then came back in a different way. And um, he said that there's no truth, there's only perception. He said that there's no truth, only perception. And he said that if his brothers were there with him today, that the same stories that he's telling, they would say it a different way. And the reason why that happens, the, let me tell you the reason why that happens and how I've came uh, aware of this. I actually came aware of it from, from Reverend Ike. So if you don't know who Reverend Ike is, you need to watch his YouTubes and then you need to buy, listen to me, you need to buy the audios because he talks about this perception that really what you say about yourself and what you believe is what you will see. And there was a, a scientist, and he, I don't remember his name, but you can look this up. This is 100% true. What we see with our eyes has already happened. So what we see with our eyes has already happened. That it's, we're seeing, uh, I don't know how much time difference it was, but it was not like what you're thinking, like you see and you see, it is not like that. And you might be saying, well, well then why uh, it, it, aren't we running into each other and all that type of stuff? Because we're all on the same wavelength so to speak all of the, we we're all have that same uh type of sense when we use our sight but if you think about it think about when they say like a football quarterback or a running back or somebody in sports and they say that the game slowed down for them the game slowed down for them what i believe that means really what I really believe that means is that their awareness level is up. Is that if you really, if, all, and, and I'm talking about myself too. I don't want to just like I'm saying I got all these answers and, and, and I'm just trying to get you there. What I'm saying is if, if we can all know that we need to understand like where we're at, we need to be in the moment and be more aware that like be less automatic because when we're automatic we don't understand things that are even around us that are amazing like if you really think about it if you really think about it like the internet the way that i'm talking to you the way that i'm communicating with you the way that i post this video up on youtube the way that my business associate sent me a text I stopped taking all of that stuff for granted because this, like for, for me, this is for me, for me, being able to do this is like something that I was dreaming about when I was in my twenties. I made an infomercial uh, when I was, I think, 26 years old, I made an infomercial I came up with the money, like I, I had a dream to be like the people that make infomercials on TV. And what I did first is I had made my business successful and then I had did some other types of small type businesses, but they all made some money. Like there was one where I made good money with uh, 900 numbers. Like I was, you know, people were talking about 900 numbers. I was actually making money having people call those psychic lines and stuff and then i was also making money uh selling people the service to be able to have their own 900 number like i i really did that stuff and so what i did is i had made this infomercial and on that infomercial i was talking about all these different ways that i had made money like with advertising with uh printing type services like it was really like things that was in at that time but the one thing that was missing, the one thing that was missing is that I would always say that I just don't have the ability to reach people like I wanted to. It was so expensive. Uh, I, I, I was buying uh, 
airtime on TV and I was paying like a thousand dollars a night to run commercials on TV that infomercial to run it one time one thousand dollars per night and we would I probably would do it about five days a week and it made money and then all of a sudden uh, direct TV came into the market this was before dish dish satellite was available and then all of a sudden they came in the market and they bought up all the advertising space. Like they were like, if he's paying you a thousand, we'll pay you fifty thousand. They were just kicking everybody out. And I was saying, like, uh man, I just can't I, I, I don't have it right here. And then what I did is I flipped to radio. But the whole time when I was doing it, I was like, I just it, something is missing something is missing and then when i started doing the youtube when i started doing uh uh content on facebook and my videos uh like you you don't know that i've been working at this since 2006 we're this is 14 years in the making it took me all the way from 2006 to 2008 before i really even got the ball rolling with internet and what I'm saying is internet business yes my publishing company very good money my real estate very good money but I'm talking about with what I had thought about with what I wanted back then in the 90s when I made that infomercial and that's why I believe like my heart everything is in me to just do this regardless there was times when I would run videos and post them on YouTube, and I didn't have anybody watching, nobody. And then all of a sudden, I just stayed consistent. And all of a sudden, one day, I had gotten like 15,000 views on one video in one day. So I knew. And what the thing that struck me at that time was that you need to be more aware of what's going on because what you are doing is what you had wanted at that time in the 1990s like it's here it's here in your face and you need to take more advantage of it and so that's what i did i'll pop out videos i'll talk and also i don't just stay on that subject because i know i know you're speaking to someone that has went you know like i don't want to say the full circle but i've had a lot of ups and downs when it comes financially and I can tell you how you're going to have to overcome it. You know, and, and when I say that no one can necessarily know your full, complete solution because you're, you're going to have to be part of it. But I do know that consistency will do it. No matter what, consistency beats anything. If you can get yourself to just be consistent, make tiny steps every day. You'll see that when you look back, you have a big, huge mountain that you built. And uh, but that's when he said that it was like perception is everything, because look at all the different ways that people are looking at things now. Look at all the different opportunities people have to get information and what that does information from people changes your perception and so what you must do is raise up your awareness so if you want to do something be something have something raise your awareness and say if i believe i deserve it i should have it and then what will happen is all the things will come into your life and people will come into your life and i'm going to speak on that in a second now if i was to go back in the past if i was to go back i'm 52 years old now started my first business when i was 20 years old if i was to go back in the past i would i would tell if there was just three things that i could say i would just say these three things and i wrote them down there it was trust yourself it was don't be afraid even more because i took risk in business where i had no paycheck coming it was all 100 percent what my wife and i did i'm a risk taker so i'm not afraid but i needed to be more aware that you had to keep once you get comfortable at a level 
you got to move it up. Once you get comfortable at that level, you want to move it up. If you want to, those are your choices if you want to. And then the third thing would be believe that I create my own circumstances. I'm the creator of my own circumstances. Even if something doesn't go the way that I want, there's some type of lesson behind it. And there's some way that I've created that. You have to be careful in your mind. You have to be very careful in your mind. And let me let me tell you the reason why. You know, like when they say uh, the power of positive thinking or the secret where you the thought becomes things. Well, let me tell you why it is not as easy as people say it is. And I'm glad that it's not. Because think of how many of the bad things that might come in your mind on a daily basis, good and bad things. And if those things materialize like that, that some of those bad things would not be good. Like there's the human mind, and, and, and Reverend Ike talks about this, the human, the, the heart, he said, uh, forgive me, the heart is deceitful above all things. And that's in the Bible also. The heart is deceitful among all things. Like there are things that you say to yourself or think about that if people would have known them, it would be like, what the hell is wrong with you? And you know that you do it because I do it. And what you have to do is you have to say you have to cross that out. Cross it out. Overcome negative with positive thinking and I know that that could be a little difficult at the beginning for someone who has had a lot of negative things happen or that seems trapped with a lot of negative things that have happened but what you have to do is you have to cross them out now you don't fight a negative thought you let a negative thought pass through that's Bob Proctor talks about that you can watch his videos too he talks about not Fighting fear, not fighting negative, let them pass through you. So if you are just afraid of taking that step to maybe start your own business, afraid of taking that step again to repair your credit, fear of taking that step to finally lower your debt or to get out of debt, like to really commit to it. You have to let that fear go through and then you have to start thinking on the positive level of putting into your mind what you want and then you start doing the actions and then with the tiny consistency that you do on a daily basis you will look back and you would have climbed a mountain and you didn't even know it so what are you going to do for this next year? Like everybody makes those resolutions. Or is it going to be the same that you had the year before? Is it going to just be the same that it was um, two years ago, three years ago? If you look back five years from where you're at now, go back five years. And I'm going to take a quick drink here. How much of your life has really changed? Are you doing what you want to do? I can tell you that I'm further than I thought I would be five years ago now. But I want to even go further moving forward. And I don't wait for a new year to make a resolution or, you know, so-called resolution or goal. I do that stuff on a daily basis. Like what I do, I'll evaluate and look at what I'm doing. And if and, and if, if it's not aimed high, then I change that day. Like the other day, I made a decision uh, with one of my companies that it's not where I want it to be, but the staffing is great. It's moving up. I think now we have... 21 and next month or by the end of this month i'm gonna have 27 employees just with that company and but i said that i want to do better with that business i want I, that that 
we were meeting goals, but I'm too comfortable. I'm too comfortable. I want to be uncomfortable. And that's just with that. Uh, but I do this with exercising. Like I've told myself, you're too comfortable. Even though I work out on those days, I think I'm going to, not think, I am going to also put into my workout pattern to get up and work out on some days before I go to work. Uh, right now, I do Thursday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and those are pretty tough. Well, I mean, I want to say, like, I'm not trying to tear, become the Incredible Hulk or something, lifting all these weights. I just do really good cardio, really, uh, really good workouts on those days. And then other days, I just kind of take it easy. But I'm, I'm going to institute cardio on some of my mornings. And my wife, she's already said it, that she's going to be like, I better be ready because with her new lungs, she's going to have me all over the place. And I believe it because even when she, with her lung issue, she was on that treadmill, she was working out, but she just did not have the lung capacity to do it. And the doctor told me when he took those lungs out, he was like, they were enlarged, they were very he said very sick. That was his words. Very sick. Like uh, it just, they wasn't going to last much longer. So what my homework for you, my homework for you is I need you to trust yourself more. I need you to trust yourself more. And what I mean by that is and I'll, I'll relay it to uh, I'll relay it to something financial, like with with a uh, material, because that's what gets the attention. Like we you know, just that's just how we are as humans. Um, I used to sometimes worry about what people would say, and then someone had told me I don't remember who it was. But they said, you know what's crazy about someone who tries to say you're not smart enough or you can't do it or you can't make it or who do you think you are? Do you know that the people that said that to me, when I, even when I have my huge house and my expensive cars, there's something that I didn't even think about, but that person made me aware of it. You know, those people don't ride in my car. Those people don't come in my house. So regardless of what they think, even, even if they encouraged me, even if they were on my side and wanted me to be successful, they still don't just come like in my house and driving in my cars. You know, maybe the ones that are on my side we might be associates or family and see each other, but... If you really pare it down, if you really think about it, this stuff is for you. So you trust yourself to get the things you want because you will enjoy them. If you like expensive jewelry, you will actually be wearing that, not someone else. If you like to, to ride in a Range Rover, Mercedes, Rolls Royce, you're going to be driving that car, not them. Regardless of how they think and feel and what they say about you, ultimately, you are the one that's going to enjoy it. So trust yourself because the rewards are only really going to be with you and enjoyed by you and your family. The other thing is don't be afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of. There is nothing to be afraid of. Like if you face your fears, the fears go away. And then if you let those fears pass through, the quicker you get to doing something to overcome those fears. The way that you overcome fear is just to take action. Uh, there's a fear has an acronym. I think it was a uh, false evidence appearing real that's what it was fall fear is false 
evidence appearing real. And you know that it's false evidence appearing real because if there's two people had the same fear, one person uh, accomplishes what they were fearful of, the other person doesn't, is the fear real or is the perception of the fear real? There we go. We just, in a way, went back full circle. Is the perception of the fear real? So if you have to make an investment in something, if you have to invest in yourself, and, and I'm picking money because that's like people are afraid to lose money. But let me tell you one of the things that's the biggest secret is that money is just a tool to get what you want. That means that money must be utilized because money sitting there, like I have on my desk here, that was my pocket money that I carry around. Money sitting around is just paper right now. This is this is just paper. But what you do with that money, like buy your cell phones. Like I can you believe I carry three cell phones around? Not because I'm using them all. Uh the Android I had to use for the these two are for the app testing. Um so that, that's why you have three phones. When when the app is good to go, it'll go on my Apple phone and I'll be done with three phones. But um so don't be afraid. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Perception. It's just your perception. Just do it. That's what I say to even to myself. Like, if I think back, like what I built, what and, I, and me and my wife, just to be clear, when I say me, it's me and my wife. What we built, because we started all of this together, was I say from nothing financially, but we had each other. We came from good families, but financially we started with really nothing and we were able to build that. So really all you have to do is just to change your perception, get rid of your fears, and you will see that things will just happen for you. And that's what goes into the next one number three again which is believe that i can create my own circumstances when you start to believe that way people will come into your life and they will give you answers like you'll be like who in the hell was that but they gave that person said something to me and either i needed it or that's some good information you know one this is okay let me give you some examples what happened with me and I've, I've told this one before there was uh when my wife and i started our first publication blue book when we started blue book i thought i had a copy right here when we started blue book which it was a newspaper tabloid back then 1990 we really didn't know what we were doing but we had the the, the idea we had the the uh, goal we were going to do it this was going to be a way to take care of our family, no matter what. Like, there was no failure, put it that way, in our mind. Even though we didn't even go to school for this stuff. Uh, but we do know how to sell. And But we had failures. The first publication was a disaster. You couldn't even read nothing on it. Because we thought that when you gave it to the printer, they made it better. And I can't even believe the printer actually printed it like... You printed this, this you can't even read it. It's the dots. Back then there was these printers called dot matrix. And they would print and they would be like dots to put the letters together. We gave that to them and that paper came out a disaster. We made no money. We lost our money because we had to pay him for the printing. So, but we kept going, we didn't quit. And then all of a sudden, this guy named Fred, big heavy, big guy, overweight. He just came out of nowhere and he said, I run papers in another city. I hear you got a paper and I want to, to introduce you to this print place that's way out in the country. You live, you're in the city and go way out in the country to go to this printer. And 
my wife and I looked at each other and you want to know what we said? We said, let's go. We went there and we met Dan. And that was, I believe, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was 1991. Because we, we were with that one printer uh, for about a good year, I think. I think it might even been shorter than that. But we met Dan and they, it was, we were paying like 500 bucks every two weeks to print our publication. But they treated us like, like uh, gold. Like they, no, even though we were small, it was just the two of us, my wife and I, they treated us like business people. And do you know that over the years, I've probably paid that company, it's, it's millions of dollars. I, I, if I add it up, like my print bill with them was like four, five, and six thousand dollars per week, and we print uh, fifty-two weeks a year. For you know, still to this day, we print fifty-two weeks a year, and now we're in our thirty-first year, and we had went to that company, and that for even for them to say that. You, you treat a company, no matter how small, because you don't know how big they're going to be. You don't know that, you know, that this person could end up being a huge publication. And as a matter of fact, Fred's publications didn't keep printing. And then he had passed away and we were still printing. Our, we're to, we're still to this day, still printing. But what it is, is that he came into our lives and we accepted that information. We accepted the information. You have a choice. We had a choice at that time. Accept it, reject it. We accepted it. What can make someone not accept it? Fear. What can make you fearful? The perception. Who is this person? So you have to be willing when people come to you, into your life, to solve those problems, to give you answers. You must either take pieces of, of what they say, and then you implement them, and then you will see that your answers will reveal themselves. I always say that no one knows fully your answers. We only know the steps that we're going to take to get to your answers, because every body is different with what they're going through with credit and debt and also their own mental awareness listen to me your mental awareness if you don't want to go in that loop what happens is people start quit start quit they're running a loop in their mind a comfort loop it feels good to start you you run a loop of disappointment in your mind so you quit when you start to see and things of your perception of how you think that that's, they should be but really your perception is being guided on your past we see that a lot with people who get in bad relationships and then they get into a new relationship and it's really the same relationship it's because their perceptions have really drawn that person to them or they are bringing that aspect out of from themselves out of that person so you have to be very careful you can't bring your old self into new situations that's the past you have to be willing to go through the fear don't fight the fear let the fear go through Think positive. Take the steps. Tiny steps. Consistency. Let it build. Don't worry about the time because you can look back right now. Five years has already passed. If it had took five years and all of your problems were solved, would you really care about the five years that passed? So let go of time. Let go of time. Time will pass but get busy with being consistent. That's what you got to do. 
So allow people to come in your lives. There's been tons of people that have came into me and my wife's lives for all of the different things that we wanted to do when it when when it came to business, when it came to personal, family, everything, health, like with the doctors, listening to the doctors. We went through several doctors and part of it was uh, her thinking on what she needed to do. Part of it was thinking, uh, getting with the right doctors. But when she got with the right team of doctors, she released it. She released the fear. She released as much of it, the anxiety as possible for her situation. She stopped being combative, which she talked about that with me. I'm not going to be confrontational with people that are trying to help me because that is a pattern. That is a pattern that a person can run in their own mind that can stop them from getting the help that they seek. And that goes for everything. That goes for everything. So allow people to come into your life. Listen. Learn. Take some of it in. If it's good, push it away. If it doesn't work for you, that's the best you can do. That's the best you can do. So uh, let's see if there's any other thing I want to talk. They well closing it out. They were talking about they're going to do another stimulus check soon. Um, six, they're talking about six hundred dollars. I'm like, why don't they? Everyone. And this will be cutting me out. Everybody, let's just say everyone that's under a hundred thousand, everyone that's a hundred thousand and below that works for somebody. Because if you're at a hundred thousand and you work for yourself, you're probably making more than a hundred thousand because you make write offs. So let's just say everyone that's a hundred thousand dollars and under that works for somebody. Give them each, each person in the household, including the kids, give them all $2,000 uh, until April. Give all of them $2,000 until April. That's, that's from me. Because I know and I understand that if they give that money and people are able to have a level of comfort, that do you know how the money will be circulating in April, May, June, July, going into August, going right back into uh, no uh, into November, going right back into December. That's how America built. People don't understand that a dollar, a one dollar, it a dollar can circulate like this one dollar. In some communities can be up to eight dollars. And you might be asking, well, how can one dollar be eight dollars? Well, that means like you say, okay, uh, I'll go get a haircut at my barber, give him the money, and then let me do it like this. My bar give barber the money, the barber, which I don't have much hair, give him the money, and then he goes and he goes and buys uh some groceries at the corner store the corner store pays the employee that works in there that employee pays their rent to their landlord the landlord uh, uses people in the community to uh, fix or clean up the properties that he has the people that fixed up the properties uh, they buy cars from the local car dealer in the community local car dealer uh maybe hires out to the local detailing shop or hires people in the community to work for them so that dollar that dollar circulates in the black community there's a, there's a, always been this uh this story and it is a true story let me take a quick drink that in uh, 
our community dollar circulates like two or three times only and um in like the jewish community circulates like 15 times i think that that's what you know i don't know what's true on how many times stuff circulates but i can tell you that if it circulates the community is strong because when i made blue book and i have employees with blue book i'm, I'm going to use that as the example i hired people my wife and i made it a point to hire people from within the community uh so we uh take in advertising from businesses that get money from people in the community we in turn put out a product to get more people to go to their stores in the, from the community we hired people in the community that also could go to those stores and use those services so you can already see how that loops and then how i've seen my employees buy homes i've seen my employees get nice apartments condos cars like their kids in daycare so like when i think about it some of the times i'm like man like and i really do feel like if i didn't even like in in 1990 like and i was close i was close when we had that trouble with the print not coming out right if i would have had quit if we would have quit just think all of these people that we wouldn't have been able to employ i probably wouldn't even had the mindset to even be coming on here to talk because what gets me to even want to even do this and talk to, to people on YouTube was what the experience that I went through when I did that infomercial. It's like the, the circumstances wasn't right then, but now that they're right, I know and I'm aware that I got to take full advantage of them. So don't give up on yourself. There's and, and yes, there's more things that I would tell myself and there's probably a lot of things you would tell yourself but if you if you could tell yourself that back then then you need to tell yourself now to do it to do something maybe the same thing isn't the same for what you would do back then but you need to do something now don't just don't go through life not taking chances don't go through life not taking chances because everything that we've taken chances on with me and my wife it always somehow was we worked it out always always so i'm going to end the video here i'm not even going to put up no nothing if you want to see resource links there below here this was just a straight up video almost one hour of me just talking uh i hope you appreciated it uh i will be actually making a lot of videos because i'm gonna have a lot of free time because my wife will be in the hospital for i believe two weeks is what the doctor told me maybe even shorter but i know at minimum at minimum one week so this is stephen a williams president and founder of the credit repair shop.com thank you and until next time